What is up, guys? This is the webinar for Stress Belly Solutions. I'm going to be monitoring the chat, so if any of you have got any questions, I will dip in and out of that to, to answer them as best as possible. Um, it's going to be in two parts. So tonight is part one. We're going to be talking about all the science and the stuff behind it. And then day two tomorrow, that's going to be all the strategies, the things that you can actually do to make a difference. So first of all, we need to understand what the problem is, what's changing or not changing for us to be able to implement the solutions for them to work. Okay. So, you know, everyone, I could give you all a meal plan and be like, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But unless you understand why it would or wouldn't work for your body, then it's going to be very difficult to keep motivated, keep you motivated to actually do the meal plan or wherever it's going to be. So that's that. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. That's basically all of the housekeeping. That is it. Nice, short, and sweet. So we can chat. Lunch. Okay, cool. I'm going to share my screen. Share. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. Share. And okay, cool. So stress by solutions, perfectionist guys to losing inches and lowering cortisol. So I'm going to first of all talk about what cortisol is, uh, go into a little bit about that. But actually first, before we do that, I'm going to open the grid so I can see more of you. But how many of you guys know or uh, have heard of perfectionism, people pleasing, type A's, type A personalities? Have any of you guys heard about those? Yeah. Some of you are like, yeah, that's me. Just stick a label on me and that's it. So I'm, and some of you may not have, and that's cool also. Like I remember the first time someone said something about being type A and I was like, hmm? I don't know what that is, but I associate myself with everything you just described. So let me start by kind of introducing, well, welcoming you guys first. So all of you guys here are probably perfectionists, people pleasers, type A's, warriors, burnt out mom, mamas, or stress heads. Anyone relate to any of those personality labels there? Everyone's like, <laughs> no, not me, please. Okay, so what is a type A? Well, let me keep letting people in. People keep dropping in here. So typically, and let me know in the chat if you um, associate with any of these kind of uh, things. Okay, so type A, driven by perfection. That is me. High achievement orientations so always want to do better, always like have those really high standards. You're like, I'm going to freaking smash this or I'm not going to do it at all. <laughs> That's me. Uh, high expectations and the fear of failure. So you're like, I'm going to do it. But if I don't, oh my God, I, well, I can't fail. It's not even an option. Um, time urgency and impatience. So you're like, I'm going to do it now. If any of you guys have ever had like an idea, and you're like, I'm going to do it now. And your partner or your friend is like, we need to buy the shelves before you can actually put them up. And you're like, come on, then let's go. And it's like, it's five to four on a Sunday. Everything's closed. You're like, let's go now. Let's do it. That kind of like go, go, go mentality. Uh, competitive nature. Sometimes this isn't um, outside. So it's not like you're competitive with others per se. It might be that you're competitive with yourself or like you always want to do better than you did last week. Or you could be comparing yourself to others. I like, go, oh, look how far they're going. Look how fast they are. Look how lean they are. You know, and you're always like, why aren't I there? I'm doing this stuff. Why aren't I there? Um, and difficulty relaxing. I literally had this conversation with a client earlier. I was like, why don't you just uh, try to relax? And she was like, mm, I can't. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about this. Anyone here say, yeah, that is, uh, I recognize some of those in my day-to-day -day life. If not, you're on the wrong webinar, guys, to be honest, because this is always going to be about. It's going to be about you lot. Also, perfectionists, driven by perfection, of course. Fear of failure, again, going to be very, very similar. Unrealistic expectations, because we can't be perfect, right? Even though we strive, your partner may tell you that you're perfect. Let's not admit it, but we're not, we're not quite there. Um, so it's unrealistic and then over commitment yeah yeah I'll do that for you oh yeah yeah I've got five minutes to slot in a half hour talk there I'll do that yeah no worries I can be there to pick up the kids and cook dinner and do the shop and clean the house and go to the gym and you know all of the the above just survive uh, and self-criticism 
it wasn't perfect. It wasn't bang on. I told myself I would do this six days in a row. And day three, I stopped for whatever reason. I was ill, wherever. And now you're beating yourself up. I'm rubbish. I can never do this. Everyone else is able to do this. Why can't I? Perfectionist. And people please, this is the last one I'm going to talk about. It's pretty self-explanatory. Difficulty saying no. Which can also obviously show yourself in... um overcommitment right so you're saying no uh saying yes all the time seeking approval and validation so you kind of not suck up that's not the right word but you'll be like yeah I'll do that even though deep down you're like oh I don't know if I want to do that uh, but you want to be you know you want to have that approval of oh do you know what Claire's a swell gal she'll do everything that I ask her she's great my husband and daughter are both listening and keep eye side eyeing me that's why you're on here Claire <laughs> um, prioritizing other people's needs over your own well-being yeah I can pick you up from the airport it's only a six hour drive don't worry about it I've got a friend like that he always says what are friends for you will literally do anything he's this to a T um, but then or you guys might do things like oh I skipped the gym today or skip yeah let's do two let's do I skipped the gym because uh, I needed to do something else for someone else. I didn't have time for myself. I was going to go to the gym, but then something came up and I was like, my, my workout can suffer. What you're really saying is my health and well-being can suffer. Or you're like, oh, I, I was talking to my sister about this earlier when people say like, well, I could, you know, I, I don't really want to do my own food and meal prep. It's because like, I got to make sure my husband's happy or my wife or whatever. And my kids, like they've got to be happy and I just eat wherever they eat. Like, don't worry about my health and well-being. And I'll just, as long as they are happy, fuck me, right? Like, sorry, Claire, I just realized your daughter's uh, listening. <laughs> and apologies, uh, Andrew, I can see you there as well. Um, but that kind of thing. It's like, don't worry about me. I'll, I'll figure myself out. I'll put myself last. And I think this comes from almost a selfless, like, I want to be valid, I want people to approve. They want people to think, oh, Faye, you're so selfless. Like you would do anything for anyone. You're such an amazing person. Don't worry that I'm like dragging my ass through the day, like, you know, not eating, <laughs> not hitting my gym, feeling miserable, crying every five minutes. Like, don't worry about that. As long as you're happy, right? So we got to recognize these things that we're saying. And then fear of conflict. Oh, I don't want to tell my partner no I don't want to have a drink because I know he'll be annoyed and he'll be like we used to be so much fun and now you're not fun anymore like all that kind of jazz or I don't want to say no to my friends because they'll be upset they'll say I'm boring or you know they'll they'll stop asking me out or whatever so this is this fear of conflict we want to be pleasing everybody else okay so I'm going to open the grid so I can see you guys any associations with any of those three personality types Claire's like tick 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 everyone Bev snarled in I, I know Rachel to a T so I know she's like embarrassingly saying yes this is me <laughs> uh cool okay you guys are in the right place then let's let Anna in another one Anna here she is another Marit says this is my entire life yeah I know tell me about it isn't that funny how a lot of my clients a lot of our clients are in this room and associating themselves with this. If you guys are in this room and you're like, yeah, this is me. You're probably like one of my clients. As in like, you're the, the, the archetype, we'd say. You're that kind of person. Okay, so choice is like, yeah, all of these, I'm just using tea. Mm, that's cool. Make sure you uh, prioritize my uh, my presentation over your dinner though, please. <laughs> uh, okay, so today you're going to understand stress and its impact. So hopefully what you're going to learn is the secrets to managing stress and achieving, well, this is the two days actually, achieving your goals without ex, with expert guidance, of course, actionable insights, and uh, it's to help you transform your health, address the stress, nutrition, exercise. So um, tomorrow we'll be doing like the stress, the nutrition exercise kind of stuff. And today we're going to be talking about the stress, what is it and how it affects you. Okay, so let's keep that people in here. There are three, when I started making this, I was like, stress is like such a underestimated problem. Actually, let me open the chat. Put a one in the chat if you would say that you are stressed, generally. 
maybe you've got like a little buzz of stress constantly, or you have these like I'm a little bit stressed, and poof, like guzzling out of uh, what they call those pipes out of the out of the ground, you know, poof, it's like a fountain. Yeah, one, 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 perfect. If anyone's two, sling your up, mate. It's not for you. Okay, so um, it's very underestimated. They just go, oh, I'm stressed. Period. Like, that's it. Like, there's nothing they can do about it. That's it. la di da I've just got to suck it up and deal with it. And if you're a, if you're a perfectionist, you do. <laughs> so here you go. You've got uh, three. I've broken up into three areas. So you've got your physiological. That's what happens in the body. You've got your psychological. That's what happens in the mind. And then you've got your behavioral. That is the actions that you take based on these things. So I've split them up so you can kind of see. So let's talk about the physiological responses first. Answer in the chat. One, if you uh, associate with any of these. Um, Joyce says, I'm always late because I try to do much. Stresses me. I know. I'm one of these people who are like, I've got to be there at five, five o'clock or whatever. And I'm like, I'll, it'll take me like five minutes. So I'll leave at like five to five. And I can squeeze something in just before I leave so I can make it on time. And then I'm like one or two minutes late because, you know, life. Uh, Married was, but better. Okay, cool. So do any of you guys have any cravings for sugar when you're stressed? Or feel exhausted a lot of the time? Doesn't matter how much you sleep. Or feel overwhelmed and like you have no time. That's Joyce. There we are. She's already said. <laughs> but put a one in the chat if that is you. Any of those things. One, one, one. One, one, one. Cool. Good, 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 good. Who has time for the first two? <laughs> exactly. Ah. Okay, so this is a very normal kind of thing to say what happens okay this is a physiological response so we're going to talk about this so stress when you are stressed it releases a hormone called cortisol you probably heard me talk about this a gazillion times but cortisol is your stress hormone and it gets secreted out and it puts you into a, st a state of fight or flight you guys have probably heard of fight or flight uh what do they call it frame or um state that's okay so fight or flight state so the cortisol rush the, the uh, secretion of cortisol is to help you deal with danger. So back in the day when we were cave people, if there was like a saber-toothed tiger running after us, probably need cortisol to bolt. Um, but these days we don't have, I don't think we have saber-toothed tigers <laughs> like hanging around outside our caves, homes. But if your kid or your dog, God forbid your dog, runs in front of a car, you're going to have that stress response. You need to go and, and save them. Don't worry, Jan, that's cool. Um, so you have this like poof, rush. And what happens is that cortisol goes into your blood, uh, gets secreted. So, in, um, so sugar goes into your blood. So you can use the sugar very, very quickly to fight the saber tooth tiger, to save your dog, you know, wherever it's going to be. So oh, I can go and save them. So the sugar in your blood is used uh, in the action that you're about to take. But if you've got too much sugar, if you've got too much cortisol, it's going to make your body store fat. And unfortunately, it likes to store it around the belly. Um, and like I say, there we go. Um, it also yeah, helps store fat so that you can use the energy for emergencies. E.g. Uh, if you're not eating, if you're fasting, like uh, in cavemen, cave people days, if you had long stints of not eating, then you ate, your body would save the calories by storing it as fat and fat is stored energy and calories and energy are can be used interchangeably because that's what they are so you have this uh basically sugar rush i guess you could call it so that you can attack the saber tooth tiger so insulin controls blood sugar you guys have probably heard of insulin yeah and uh, so that will bring your blood sugar down and helps move sugar from your blood into your cells but when you've got high cortisol insulin doesn't get secreted as frequently and so you've got this like off balance kind of thing so cortisol pushes in uh, pushes sugar into your blood and um insulin isn't working very well it's not secreting as well so you haven't got that balance so you now have got this battle of high blood sugar levels essentially so then when you've got too much sugar in your blood and insulin isn't working as well or if your stores are full if you've got diabetes for example uh, type 2 then the sugar in your blood gets stored as fat. 
for later, just in case we need it, right? So the higher stressed you are, the more sugar in your blood, essentially. And then the more sugar in your blood, the more fat you're going to store. And that's basically like the easiest way I can kind of describe to you guys what happens with cortisol and insulin. Um, so if you've got, if you store more fat, obviously you're going to be fatter, but all, uh, also you're going to have insulin resistance. So as a kind of side note here, insulin resistance is when your body is resistant to insulin. Insulin helps lower the blood uh, sugar. If you're insulin sensitive, this is good. Lots of uh, blood sugar being pulled out, essentially. If you have got any hormonal issues, PCOS, um, if you've got, uh, if you're going through perimenopause and menopause, your insulin resistance will be higher anyway, normally, right? So you've already got half a battle, which is why it's more difficult to lose weight if you've got these uh, hormonal issues. Uh, and then, of course, if you've got insulin resistance, really high, diabetes type 2. Diabetes type 2, high cholesterol, uh, you've got all these other like comorbidities they're called. So it's really, really important that I think, don't think we understand, we don't stress enough how much stress can impact your health and life overall. Okay, so does that make sense, guys? I'm gonna just open the grid so I can see everybody. Does that all make sense with the two hormones? Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so this is now your physiological. This is... Uh, no, it's psychological. Sorry, got the bar across the top. I can't see it. Do you feel like you don't have enough time of the day? Again, let's put one in the chat. Is your willpower lower when you're stressed or overwhelmed? And do you often feel melt mentally exhausted? So you're going to get some crossovers with these as well. Yep, 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 yep. Tony's like, I ain't got time to have willpower. <laughs> Never enough hours, Julia. Yep. Julia says never enough hours as she's eating her lunch at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Mm, did I talk about this in the next one? Let's have a look. Did I, did I, did I, did I? Okay, yeah, let's talk about this. I didn't, but we'll talk about it. Now. So stress can make you feel sad or worried. Yeah, so it does give us this like, almost like an adrenaline, like, oh, let's do it. But it also can make you feel stressed and worried. And this is typically the stress that people feel. You can have stress, like uh, stress and nerves are very, very similar with the way that they, um, your body responds to it. But the way you kind of label it can be difficult, uh, different. And obviously, like stress, we do need to get things going. Because if we never felt stressed, we'd just be like, doesn't matter. House is on fire. It's cool. Like, you know, it's, it's a dangerous so we do need stress and it also gets shit done if you have got projects at work like a couple of our clients in the in here right now are vets so if they're doing surgery and they're not like a little bit stressed right they'll just be like ah, what's this we don't eat probably doesn't need that he's good right so we need a little bit of stress to help us thrive um and you can actually have burnout which some people label uh or, or say that your cortisol basically does not secrete so that's like the other end where you're just like i don't care what happens to the house that's on fire um so we do need stress but obviously then it's going to make us feel sad and worried it's going to make us feel down so perfectionist type a's and people pleasers typically feel like they don't have enough time for anything because life is stressful and overwhelming it is um but constant stress keeps your mind busy and your body keeps making cortisol. So it's this big cycle of like, I'm busy because I like to be busy, right? We like to get things done. We're like, yeah, tick, 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 Viv. Tick, 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 my daily check boxes. Like I love a check box. Um, we're doing all this. We're pushing as much stuff into our day as possible so we can feel valid. And we did 10 yesterday, let's do 11 today so we can feel a bit better. We're saying yes to everybody else because we're people pleasing and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah I can handle this. Um, but then when you're constantly stressed, your mind's always busy and your body keeps making more cortisol, more cortisol, more cortisol. So we're never out of the cycle of like high blood sugar, essentially. Um, never enough hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention on this as well, uh, the willpower situation. So there is something called decision fatigue. So we have uh, a certain amount of decision 
willpower a day, decisions that we can make a day. Every single decision that we make throughout the day drains, like pouring out, like pouring a little bit out, um, your decision-making capabilities. Let's say you have, you, you've probably got like, you know, 82 million or something, whatever it is. But every single decision that you make, like, shall I get out of bed or shall I stay? Shall I wear this, 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 this or this? Shall I brush my teeth or not? Shall I wear my hair up or down? Like every single decision that you make is like a drip, drip, drip out of your decision-making um, powers. So by the end, if you're constantly making decisions based on stress, or even if you're not stressed, like if you're constantly making decisions, your willpower is going to decrease and then you're going to make quote-unquote bad decisions for your own health and well-being. This is why most people that work out earlier on the day do better because their decision-making capabilities are high. Just woke out of bed, woke up out of bed, got dressed, did my workout. Versus, then I went to work. What way do I drive to work? Do I walk? Do I, do I, where do I park? Will I reverse into the space or will I drive into the space? All of these decisions all the way through the day. And then at the end of the day, like, good night. Like, I'm not doing my workout today. So there is that also. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So when you're overwhelmed, you've got less, less willpower, like I just said. Um, You might feel too busy to make healthy choices. Yeah, we're like, uh, I'll just have this pizza today. It's fine. It's just one pizza. One drink. It's just one bit of chocolate. It's not going to hurt. I love that saying. Um, You might also have no mental energy. And then you're going to change your behavior based on how you're feeling. E.g. energy, mood, uh, too busy, like, time and so on and so forth so can you guys see how your physiological and then influences your psychological right now can you guys understand that cool 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 thank you Beth cool Julia cool okay okay so behavioral this is what you actually do so again one's in the chat actually I'm gonna say two so make sure you're listening two in the chat if you find yourself eating more junk food when you're stressed Oh, this pizza. Have you skipped a workout because you've been too busy? And do you find that poor sleep makes you crave unhealthy foods? I always use the example like when people are stressed, no one's like, I'm gonna stop some broccoli in my mouth. Like, I don't know anyone uh, that's ever said that. Or some crunchy iceberg. Right? <laughs> it's always like chocolate or pizza or crisps or nachos or something in there. More cravings are more likely to get a takeaway. Yeah, exactly. And this is partly to do with the physiological response of the blood sugar, the sugar rush, essentially, and then the drop. And when you have that drop, your body's like, give me more. And then that's where you have these cravings. So that's a side, little side note there. Could have put in, but I didn't. But now you know. So when you're stressed, you might eat more junk food and decide not to exercise, especially if you're You've got low energy and your decision-making fatigue has kicked in. And then for perfectionists, stress eating or skipping workouts uh, because of a busy schedule can become habit. So we're like, uh, actually, where is she in here? I'm going to name a shamer. Emily. (laughs) That's Emily to a T. She's like, always working, always traveling. I'll skip my workout. She's getting much better, to be honest. But um. There's definitely her. Yep, this is me. There there she is in the chat. Um, Joyce says, I have a massive correlation between being tired and eating high sugar snacks. Yeah. So when you sleep well, your body recovers, it shuts down. It like, you know, fully recharges its batteries. If you don't fully recharge your batteries, then your body needs energy from somewhere and energy is stored in food. So when you eat there, you get the energy. Um, and so the quickest energy that you can get is sugar, basically. So white bread, crisps, chocolate, you know, the really tasty stuff. Like that is where most of the sugar is going to come from. Fruit, I guess, if you want to be boring, you can have fruit. Okay, so guys, the your body is the manifestation of your habits. And I want you to take a screenshot of that, remember this, write it down. Because so many people say things like oh you know I just don't have time I don't know why I don't look like that or you know (laughs) that's a good I don't know why I don't look that I train it's like yeah but you sleep like shit and you eat shit so that's probably why you look like shit so we need to really think about 
our habits and our habits are formed from our uh, psychological thoughts or psychological responses and they come from our physiological responses so there is a buck and it stops here with stress and sleep but stress stops you from sleeping also this is why this is the first one um so if you're constantly skipping the gym if you're constantly putting other people first if you're constantly reaching for the snacks or alcohol that's another one Just quick glass it's going to be fine First, first lesson of the day as a teacher, just take a swig. You know, that kind of thing. If you're doing all these habits, you skipping your workouts, not going for walks because it's too too cold, uh, then your body is going to show that, essentially. I don't know anybody that has a healthy habit schedule or healthy lifestyle, I guess, but looks unhealthy. I don't know anybody. So that's something to consider also. Okay, so behavioral. I come across a study and it said that eating sugary things when stressed can actually dysregulate your cortisol response. Very interesting. I didn't know this. I found it very interesting. Um, and make it harder for your body to handle stress. So you've got a, a baseline, right? And I said here, you, there is something you could do to raise that baseline. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, but you have a stress baseline. And so if you eat sugary things when you're stressed, your baseline decreases. So you can handle less stress. Uh, essentially alcohol also does this decreases your uh, ability to handle stress so there are just a couple of things that can do that so when you are feeling stressed you're like i'll just have this quick sugary hit if you're making yourself feel better temporarily but long term that's gonna shoot you in the foot right so we need to think of some tactics so let's put it all together Work, kids, friends, responsibility, partner, money, how we feel about our body, health risks, driving, planning our days. They're all very, very stressful, right? That's our baseline stress level, we could call it. And you guys can, you know, create your own list of baseline stress, day-to-day -day stress. Nothing like, you know, my house is on fire kind of situation. I'm about to get run over. Not that kind of stress. Just normal, you know, day-to-day -day buzz, we call it. And then you get an email from the boss. You're like, oh, okay, well, it's not again or um, you have an interview, or you're being bridesmaid, you go to a speech, you got to stand up in front of everyone, you wear the dress, you look shit in. Um, that, those kinds of things just tip you over the edge, right? You're like, I was surviving, now I'm like boiling over. I use the analogy of um, when you cook pasta in a in a saucepan, a saucepan, however you pronounce it, and you got the water kind of boiling, and then you, you like literally turn away for half a sec, and you turn back and all over, I stained your counter, or if you've got a gas hob, it's, it's out. That's basically what I, that's what I uh, call a pure stress response. So if our baseline is low, the water is low. So if something tips us over the edge, we're just like, uh, okay, we can come back down. Versus we're up here on 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 the buzz, and then something happened, <gasps> gone. You know, we're, we're over the edge. Claire's partner's going, oh, I know when she's like that. Right? So we've got to bring the baseline down as much as possible. So cortisol releases, you have cravings. This is what happens, right? Uh, you binge, you skip a workout, you choose unhealthy foods or alcohol, and the cycle continues. Can you guys see the kind of step-by-step -step process that happens here? Have I made that very clear for you? Cool. Any questions on that? Any questions? No. Okay. If you've got any, just check my chat. Okie dokie. Chronic stress affects weight, sleep, mood, and overall health. So we've spoken about how it can affect basically mood. We've spoken how it can affect weight. We've spoken how it can affect overall health. Think about it later down the line, like diabetes. And also things like if you're highly stressed, your blood pressure is probably higher than normal. Um, high cortisol can dis dysregulate your estrogen. It can cause inflammation in your joints. You know, there's all these like side things that people don't talk about, which is like, we're stressed or we're not. It's like, well, you know, you get inflammation fairly regularly. Your period is a little bit off. Your mood is very up and down. Your weight gain is mostly around your belly. And you're on the go, go, go all the time. You don't like to take a break. B, it's stress, you know? So we've got to think about these other things. And sleep. I didn't do like a big, big thing about sleep in here because um, I'm probably going to run up to the minute here anyway. I love a chat. 
But generally, this this says is if you're stressed, you don't sleep very well, right? You're like panicking, you're thinking, well, it could be two reasons. It could be, I can't get to sleep. Or it could be, I've got to catch a flight in the morning, I've got an interview tomorrow, where if I don't wake up and all that kind of jazz, right? There's always those kinds of things. So if you're not sleeping well, that's going to make you crave things, like Joyce said earlier. Um, and it's also going to make growing muscle very difficult because that's where you grow the muscle. Memory will start to decrease. You'll get more brain fog. And there's all these other consequences. And bad sleep makes it difficult to lose weight anyway because it messes with leptin and ghrelin, two other hormones. So it's all correlated. But I feel like stress is like the main we can knock that domino down. The other ones will start to fall into place. Okie dokie. So here is the cycle. And I want a, a one in the chat. If you guys like, yeah, that's me. I've been through this before. So you feel stressed um, and then you binge or you quit your diet or whatever you're doing. And then you are like, oh my God, my health has gone shit or my energy's crap or I don't like my body or I've got this massive like flabby belly. And then you'll, you ruminate on why you can't get a handle on this because you should be able to do it. You've got a handle on your work life. You kill it at work. So why can't you do this? You, you can slay everywhere else in life, but your body is just something you cannot get to grips with. And you start beating yourself up with that. And then you're like, this is the time I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it properly. Yes, yes, yes. Go hard on diet and exercise while trying to balance everything else. Not thinking about your stress. You're too busy thinking about your diet, sticking to your meal plan and doing lots of hits and cardio. You feel stressed and then you binge and you quit. You have bad health and energy. You feel like crap with your body. Then you're like, why can't I do this? And you go hard and this this big cycle, right? So this is the cycle that we find most people are in. It's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible cycle. So um, I, when we get off this, I'm going to send you guys uh, an email. Yeah, I'll send it tonight with the replay. And I'll also send in this, I'll send in a, uh, this personal assessment to identify stress triggers. It's a workbook, worksheet, worksheet. And it's basically you can talk through um, what you need to look for and give you prompts to write. You can either print it out and write it, or you could just, you know, make notes in your own journal or something or A4 paper. Um, and I think that's going to be really beneficial for you to help you get out of this cycle. So, First of all, we need to like identify the stresses, that kind of stuff. So I'll put that in the email for you guys and you can fill that out. That'd be great. You don't have to send it to me just for your own sanity and for your partner's sanity and for your kids' sanity. Fill it out. <laughs> okay, so unique stresses of type A's, perfectionists and people pleasers for you guys. Fear of failure. So we spoke about some of these earlier and now we're going to talk about the stress kind of uh, associated with those problems. So chronic stress and intense fear of making a mistake. Oh, guys, like making mistakes is like the worst thing. Any type A's in here? Let me just open this. Any type A's in here ever apologize? No? Because oh, we're never wrong. That's why. <laughs> so we never make mistakes. Um, so that's uh, obviously very stressful then because we're like, oh, what if, or anyone like hyper aware of their partner's mood or someone in work, you're like, oh, I in a good very mood today or in a very good mood and you kind of like tiptoe around them and you're scared to say the thing in case it triggers them there's a big argument people please her. um so there's all these like uh problems that are going to be coming out of that um making the fear of making mistakes unrealistic expectations our expectations are so high that they are ridiculous let's be reasonable you can't you know like get a promotion and do that course and study for a university side and do your main job and um do a side hustle and look after your kids and you know work on your stress and make sure you look freaking awesome and we can't do all these right but we we try and unfortunately that's why we fail because we set all these massive goals like yeah reach for the moon or whatever that saying is fall in the stars it's like, okay, let's be reasonable. Let's just aim for the stars instead. <laughs> Screw the moon. We don't need it. Let's aim for the stars. Overcommitment. That's going to make us feel really stressed because especially for people, please, I remember, we're going to be taking on too many tasks. We go, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Don't worry. I've got you. I'll do it. I'll take that brunt of that work. Don't worry. 
really proud of ourselves or given up on our own health to satisfy someone else. Um, so yeah, to excel, satisfy others, result in burnout and persistent stress. We're always like, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm fine. You're like rocking back and forth, you're not fine. Um, and then seeking approval, constantly seeking validation, approval from others, leading to anxiety when this approval isn't received. I'm going to open the grid so I can see you guys. Anyone, I'm going to fully open this. Anyone ever have, know someone that they just know they don't like you? Anyone got anyone? They're like, I just know that person doesn't like me. And it really bothered you at the beginning. Maybe now you don't, don't give a shit. But before you were like, I can make this person like me. Do or die. Like whether they like me or not. You're my best friend. Um, when we're always doing that, obviously, and we've got this like bit of a knock, can really hit our ego. We are ego driven. Um, and then that's going to make us feel bad about ourselves. We're not good enough. Then the perfectionism comes in. Like, why aren't you good enough? Why doesn't that person like you? Maybe it's your hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then you start like shaving your hair off. So <laughs> neglect of personal needs. Prioritizing other needs over your own. We've already discussed this. So lots of people, especially moms. I know we've got some moms in here. They're like, oh, I can't do that. My kid, something. My kid needs me. Or, you know, oh, I want to spend time. <laughs> oh, I want to spend time with my kid. No, but I mean, like, I have to be there every second of the day that my kid is there. And it doesn't matter about my mental health or the fact that I'm telling my kid they're perfect and they don't need change. And I'm like, poured my fat belly in the mirror. Like, we need to be prioritizing ourselves. And so... You can turn up then as your best self to other people. Like if I was constantly like burnt out and I just, just give up on myself, I wouldn't be able to turn up here for you guys with passion that I just throw out every single day. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be able to develop myself. I wouldn't be able to help you guys, answer you guys. So I need to be my best so I can help others. And same with you guys. Like if you've got kids or, you know, even if you haven't got kids, I haven't got kids. Um, but showing up for other people, you need to be your best first. So always me first. Um, all or nothing mentality. Yep. Diets in particular. Gonna do it all. Gonna cut my carbs and going, <laughs> going vegan. I'm gonna cut my carbs. Don't know how that's gonna work. Uh, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna eat really low calories. And then I'm gonna do this. And also I'm gonna do all these exercises. I'm gonna do couch to 5K. I'm gonna like, yeah, whatever. Then something happens you eat a bit of meat on your vegan diet you're like oh this bacon tastes amazing and they're like well fuck it give me every, give me the cheese now it's all in like screw the vegan diet and you kind of go like this all the time up and down up and down up and down so you never get anywhere because you're all you're always all or nothing instead of being like i could do a little bit at a time maybe that would work never tried that before maybe that's why i'm still unhappy um and then you've got time and urgency and impatience i don't like to say impatience that's not we're just very driven individuals. Um, so we're pressured by time constraints, sense of urgency, triggering the body's stress response and maintaining high cortisol levels, right? It's a very uh, easy one. Um, some people work better under stress. I know, obviously, like uh, the vets in the house here, they are under stress when they're doing surgery. And if they were chilled, we wouldn't want that to happen or your surgeon or whatever. Um, some people love the adrenaline rush when they have to like do some public speaking or something. They love that rush. Or if you've got a time, uh, you've got a project doing, you might stew in three weeks' time. You leave it to like three days after. You're like, <laughs> I could do this. And you like smash it out of the park. Some people work better like that. But if it's constant and you've got other things, remember that boiling water? We need to bring that level down first and foremost. Okay. Do any of those resonate i do a lot better when i feel challenged otherwise i don't don't work 200 percent. yeah exactly lots of people like that cool 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 okay i'm glad it's helpful okay so techniques guys this is a little teaser so techniques for realizing recognizing early signs of stress so journaling anybody do journaling in here Every single one of my clients should be raising their hands right now. <laughs> like, yeah, me, me. Um, no, like no one does journaling. You guys, you're wild. Uh, Vicky does. Oh, Bev does sporadically. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, to a degree, Amy does. I go through phases, definitely, when I'm like chilling every morning, doing awesome, and I never feel great. I never like, yes, now I'm ready to, it's like euphoria. I never get into euphoria from journaling. So the days that I don't journal consistently, like I've, I've done like six days, something I've journaled, I'm like, it, like got like a bit of a tick going on kind of thing. There's a bit of a problem. So sometimes we can recognize our stress through doing it regularly. And it also brings it down, but it'll also make us realize like, hmm, not feeling very good today. Don't know why. And that's it. You just you just leave it there. You don't have to judge yourself about it. Do we need to work to 100% uh, because we're a perfectionist? Yeah, exactly. I keep kept diary as a teenager, but I haven't done it as a like. So you don't, it's not like a dear diary. This hottie in the gym today bent over and picked up his weight in front of it. It's not like, <laughs> okay. But um, journaling, I tend to, someone asked me this, Sam, one of our clients, Sam, said like, what do you journal? And I start by uh, giving myself one main target to hit that week. Like, I'm going to go do this presentation this week. It's that. That's the presentation. It's my main goal. If I don't do anything else, like I haven't put any content out for the last two days because I've been working on this. But this is my priority right now. Everything else can go, go to the wayside is cool. And then I write down like three mini tasks that will get me there. And then I say, what happened today or yesterday, I guess. Sometimes I reflect on the day before. What happened? Was I upset about something? Did I feel uncomfortable about something? Was I walking down the street? And like earlier, for example, I was, I went for my blood test and I could hear someone walking behind me. And I immediately like felt like a bit of, uh, not shock, a bit of like concern in case there was like a man behind me gonna, I don't know, throw me against a car and stab me to death or something. All reaction. But I could feel the like nerves pick up and anxiety I pick up um, behind me. I turn around, there's a woman also going for blood test. <laughs> but it's those kinds of things. Like, why did I feel that way? Like, be really curious. Like, am I real on edge for some reason? Am I worried because like, I got bad knee at the minute? Maybe I wouldn't be able to run. Maybe that's coming into it. And just coming up with potential ideas and, and thoughts. That's the best way to journal. No judgment. Just be like, oh, that was an interesting feeling that I had. And learning from that. But that's when you also notice like, oh, today I just didn't just didn't feel very good. Or oh, yeah, I did quite irritable. I shoved it out. I didn't shout at Cam today. I haven't really seen him. But it could be like, oh, I shoved it at Cam today. And so where I come from, it just comes come out to me. Irritating he is. <laughs> and then you might be like, actually, yeah, it's me. Um, body scanning. I quite like this one as well. Uh, the way I did this was at night shutting down my body but in the morning you could do as well so you kind of like wake up and you're you start with like your toes and you wake your way up like is there anything going on my toes are they like crunched up uh am I like feeling like tight and uh, like stressed um I like to go up but this is head to toe you can do either way you want and it, but it might be like oh my neck is hurting me don't try and like then like click your neck or anything just write it down my neck or just think about my neck um, identify emotional changes. Maybe you need help with this one, guys. Maybe ask someone you live with <laughs> if they are brave enough. You notice I'm a bit more irritable lately? <laughs> no, Claire, you're awesome. You're, you, you, I love you. It's exactly how you are. You haven't changed at all. Perfect. Uh, so, have you noticed any increased irritability, anxiety, feelings of being overwhelmed uh, recently? That's so what you can write down or think about. And then behavioral changes. So look at shifts in your eating. Have you been grabbing the snacks more often? I don't know if any of you guys saw my story yesterday. I was like, I didn't know how much of an emotional eater that I actually am. Like recently I've been like, like the last few months I was like, very dark chocolate, very dark chocolate. It's healthy, very dark chocolate. And now that I'm on this like very strict uh, nutrition thing, I'm like, uh, just a bit, no, can't, can't have that. Can't, can't have it. And so I'm noticing myself more often being like, there's a pizza downstairs right now, and I'm like, slither, a slither will be will be fine. Um, but notice if you are changing what you're eating. Are you just snacking a little bit more? Are you adding a little bit more salt? Are you adding more sweet things? Um, are you not eating as much? Are you sleeping less? Are you sleeping more? Is it disturbed sleep? Are you saying no to friends? Are you like, fuck them, I can't be bothered? The hangout. Or 
are you like, yeah, yeah, I'll go out with everybody because you're a people pleaser and you're trying to distract yourself from something that's going on, you know, in another area of your life, perhaps. So monitor those kinds of things. It's going to be really important to start to notice if there are any potential problems with stress. So does it really work? Oh, Buffet, I just want to lose my belly. Um, You have to start here. I would say 99.999% of our clients that join us, we start with a priming phase. And typically this looks like bringing stress down. And like with Debbie, this is a little bit later, but you can definitely see the difference. Um, But she was, both of them actually, they started prioritizing their gym time and their meal prep. But to do that, we had to reduce their stress, work on their mindset and really work through it. So this one is like both of these, if you look at them, because we see bodies like day in, day out, we can typically, generally, see if a body is like a hormone belly, a cortisol belly, just a fat belly, you know, like pure fat. We can typically t- tell, and these two are both uh, cortisol bellies, what we'd say. So it can, it definitely does work. Another thing you can look out for is like um, the size of like leg versus belly. There's not like, you know, her arms and her legs are quite small. And then it's a uh, belly, which is the main problem. So that can be a telltale sign as well. So these are two of our clients, Jen and Debbie, <laughs> who uh, we both worked on stress with as the priority. And then we worked on like nutrition and training and all that kind of stuff. So it definitely does work. And then we've got other things, right? Like health. So um, da, 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 da. we've got stress. So this this girl, uh, Catherine, has lost 84, I think, 80 something pounds. So she said, change my thinking about everything, appearance, self-worth, boundaries, stress, gratitude, priorities, health, and loads more. So again, it's, we're working on the mindset, and that's going to come from de-stressing, journaling, working on these other things. Um, and this one, it says, like, I knew, I know more about, like, eating. So about making those good choices, like, how are they going to affect me later? But first of all, you need to be in control of your mindset, so you can make those better choices, so you know how it feels. Uh, this girl, Michelle, she had really bad endometriosis. So she had no energy, typically three to four days um, of her period. She would uh, excessively l- lose a lot of blood, basically, and just be out as. And we worked with her to decrease her stress. And then, uh, as you can see here, like, she got loads more energy. And then this one, um, we broke through plateaus because she couldn't can not believe this is happening we had another one <clears throat> i couldn't find a screenshot of it um but she has got pcos kt her name is and she was having like 90 110 day cycles 130 day cycles like her menstrual cycle was really really long <clears throat> and then we regular we decreased the stress that was the first thing tweaked her nutrition a little bit um and her exercise she was doing like three x three classes a day so we stopped her from doing that told her off uh decreased the stress uh, we'll talk about excess tomorrow, actually, guys. And now she's having like regular, you know, 30 to 35 day cycles for months on end. So it does work. And it's not just about the belly, but also about these other things, energy, plateaus, mindset, uh, having uh, normal menstrual cycles. There's all these extra things uh, that we look out for and that we can improve on by working on stress first. Okay, so the summary of day one. Excuse me. The science, so we've spoken about the science of stress and its impact on people like us, perfect people. Um, We've learned how to identify personal stress triggers, or you will do when you've got the worksheet. We're gonna, we've discussed the unique stresses like uh, for people like us that other people maybe don't have. Can you, I'm going to open this grade back up. Can you believe some people don't feel like the way we feel? Can you believe that some people like, don't want to do better in life like i don't understand i just can't get to that. i can't understand those people um uh, uh, and then you have you now you know about the understanding of like how all of these things kind of affect and how the physiological psychological and behavioral response all comes from the the, the stress um and how it can affect all of these kinds of things Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the practical techniques for immediate stress relief and then long-term strategies as well, because sometimes we're like about to go into a meeting, we're super stressed out, or you want to like not be very nice to your partner, and you're just like, oh, do you know what, just need to give me two minutes and de-stress. 
<clears throat> excuse me um but then also there's the long-term stuff right that buzz that i was talking about earlier we need to bring the buzz down uh specifically for people like us and then actionable steps to balance cortisol levels improve overall health and well-being and break free from the stress weight cycle and free gift free gift tomorrow <clears throat> so q and a's that is that is all for today the rest of it's going to be tomorrow so any questions for that, guys? Anyone learn anything? Anyone resonate? Anyone be like, oh yeah, that was me. Anyone got any questions? Don't understand something? Anything? Anything at all? Oh, someone's just come in. Missed out. Replay. Replay for them. Clear for me. Cool, 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 cool. If anyone has got any questions, they feel free to unmute or put them in the chat. I'll give her a minute. And if there's nothing, then we can head off. Oops. Dismiss. I'll give you back five minutes of your night. No hi, worries. Hi. Can uh, I, um, hi, it's Joyce. Can I just, I was start, going to start typing, but it's going to take me too long. Um, so one of my issues is I find it hard to go to bed. Um, yeah. I don't really like going into my room I think I I think I feel quite lonely at night so I end up either being on Facebook or you know I find it really hard I go to sleep really quickly I think because you told me before that I'm probably overtired um so once I do lie down turn off the light I go to sleep really quickly but I almost feel like I need to have something to help me and I can't relax I don't do relaxing either like you said so I don't really know. I can't maybe journaling at bedtime. Or then I thought maybe when you were saying about, I can't think what you called it, thinking about your body and where the body stresses stand. are. Are you be doing that? But I just wondered if you had any tips. That was all. Yeah, so you can do the body scan. You can use Headspace, which is, uh, like, I think it's free on Spotify, some of them. And that will do like a, a body scan. Or you can just find a YouTube. Don't watch it. Please don't watch Please don't be on your phone before bed, but you can what you can listen to the body scan. Um, but when you've done it a couple of times, you'll understand. Like, uh, you know, in the night I'll I'll go down, which is weird. In the morning I go up, but in the night I'll go down from my brain. Okay, shut this off. Um, what's happening? Okay, let me think about it. Then there are other things. So some people, I sometimes if I can't, well, it's not that you can't sleep, is it? It's that you can't wind yeah. down. Okay, yeah. so if you can't wind down or you don't like going to bed, do you, do you say it was lonely, Joyce? Yeah, I think that's what it is. I don't know. I find it really hard to relax, so I don't I really I... stop in the day. So then yeah. I think I find it really hard to then just go and go to bed. I don't know. I, I haven't quite worked it out. I think a lot of people would be happy to be alone. <laughs> but, shut up. <laughs> um. But it could be that you need something to look forward to. So when you go to bed, do like a routine that you really look forward to. For some people, it's like, I'm going to do my skincare. Some people, it's like, I'm going to listen to an audio book. Some people, it's like, I'm going to read. Like I saw my my aunt, my auntie like a couple of months ago. She's like, I just love reading. I can't wait to get into bed and just like flip through my pages. You know, it's just something that you can't wait to go and do versus having that negative association with bed. And this can also occur uh, if you work in bed like if you take a laptop and you're like oh, i'll just check my emails you have negative association with it or if you're scrolling on socials and you're feeling like crap because you're not exactly where you want to be and everyone else is exactly where you want to be but you're in your bed your brain's going to associate well i feel like shit when i'm in bed because this is where this shit happens so that can work there are um supplements that you can take like ashwagandha that's a stress supplement you just gotta be careful with supplements in case like you know it's legal and everything you just gotta be careful if you're taking any other medication sometimes it can play a little bit with it magnesium is something that most people can take fine magnesium biglycinate not citrate citrate that can be helpful as well just to like bring the awareness down um when it comes to de-stressing find something that you like to do saying this to my, my client earlier for me i love drawing can't do it anymore because i've got a bad wrist but like anything else that you can kind of do that is mentally and physically being in one place so like with a 
reading a book would be better than a ebook for example or like my sister i'm in my sister's room with her she's got loads of colored uh what are these called like markers marker pens different color pens because she just colors so her book here somewhere earlier actually um so coloring that's another good one people like to sew or to crochet or to do something so find something that you feel you know i mean i'm really excited i can't wait to get better and color my book um but something that you will you know go towards um and as for relaxing generally i was saying earlier one suggestion would be to set a timer in in your day maybe after work a 30 second timer where you just don't be on your phone you just sit and i tried to do like a I try to do 10 minutes and I'm like itching. I'm like, hey, it's, it's nearly there, 10 minutes. I look at my watch, it's like two and a half minutes. I'm like, oh my God. Like, a, you, know, you can feel yourself getting stressed because you're not doing something. And then it's the mental battle. And this is where you use your competitiveness and be like, well, I, I can get to 10. I can get to 10. And that's where you kind of use the, the negative, uh, you know, things that cause the problems to your advantage. So those kinds of techniques could help um, as well as, um, yeah, not being on your phone, obviously before bed, they're going to be the key things, I think. And then thank tomorrow, you. everything we learn tomorrow, hopefully that helps as well. Great, thank you. All right. Bev, I've spent some time working on my sleep pattern. I used to approximately four hours sleep. Oh my gosh. Uh, and now she has six. I was doing meditation. Yeah, meditation is a good one. I don't like it because I... I want to crawl out of my skin. Uh, just because my body's a bit like, but well, my mind's like, what about this? What are you doing? What are you doing? You should be doing this. What about that project? Why didn't you speak to that client? Oh, what's that client doing? You know? Um, whereas when I'm doing something, I can't be thinking about anything else. Otherwise, I'll go out to the lines. And God forbid I colour outside the lines in my book, you know? Um, Anna, she's a one of our clients. I had to make my bedroom a happy place. I love my rug, my comforter, my salt light, my twinkle lights, and do nothing in my room but happy things. Leave that to your imagination, what Anna does in her room. <laughs> but that's it. you got to make it a place where you look forward to going. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, there we go. I was nearly single for 13 years. I had to work on this. I had to work on this time of day. Um. Bev, I understand what Joyce means. I'm single and have no kids. Sometimes I go to bed and I am not bored of meeting or trying to feel lonely. Uh, trying not to feel lonely. Yeah. Well, I think grass is always greener, isn't it? We had the photo shoot on Saturday and I spoke to Amhara. Hope your partner doesn't hear what I'm about to say. But uh, she was saying... Like last night, she slept in the hotel by herself, Friday night. She goes, it was so nice. You know, just to be able to not have that next to me. <laughs> well, you could like starfish out. Um, but I think the grass is always greener. So ways that you could do it is listen to an audiobook so you feel like there's someone there. Or, or you guys, if you struggle with sleep, I've uh, got a referral code for 30 days of free for Brain FM. I think it's like £86 a year or something. I don't know what it is in dollars, $95. Or um, well, you pay monthly, and that can help you prepare for sleep. Also helps you focus. If you've got ADHD, it'll give you like a focus. They're like advanced binaural beats that will help you get into focus. Um, but that can be something to relax and everything as well. Patty likes to do puzzles, like Sudoku. The harder the puzzle, the better, because I tend to close my eyes when I'm thinking and oft often find I doze off. Yeah, you're like... <laughs> Which is fine with a book. I try not to do it in front of the TV. Uh, another thing for sleep, and I know Joyce asked about sleep, but I will share this with you. There's two things that I do that work really well. The first thing is, because I'm a planner, I love a plan, I literally think about my day the next day. Like, I'll wake up, I'll have breakfast, like tiny details, like, I'll have this for breakfast. Then at this time, I'll do this. And then at this time, I'll do this. And I get to like mid-morning, I'm asleep. And the other thing I like to do is think of cities or countries, because I'm not very good at geography. So whatever I can think of in that category. Uh, in Starting with each letter of the alphabet, but backwards. So I'll go like Z, Y, X. X is always a hard one. Yeah. But I'll try and go backwards through the alphabet. And I typically get to like P or something like that, and I'm, I'm asleep. 
So there are two things that can help with sleep um, as well. And then there are tactical things like not being on your phone first thing in the morning. I did a reel on this the other day called dopamine dodging. So you can dopamine dodge, um, making sure you're getting daylight as soon as possible, keeping stress low. So there's all these other kinds of tactics as well. But for um, choice in particular, find make it a place that you freaking love to be that you don't do anything else in. Sex and sleep. That's the only two things you do in bed. No TV, no on your phone, no work. They're, they're the two things, only two things. Uh, and then your body will associate that room with nice things and relaxing things. There you go. So, anybody got any more questions before we head off? No. Okay, so what I'll do is, as soon as I get off this, I will upload it and then I'll send you guys the link and the PDF for you to, to make notes on or wherever. Do some journaling tonight, Joyce. There we go. That's what you can do. <laughs> cool. If you guys have got any questions, let us know. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow at the same time for everything else. Bye-bye.